did a skeleton key here and uh, it's the first day still of just barely still the first day of the summerween readathon and I've already swapped out at least one book probably two <laughs> but I finished uh, Kelly Link's short story collection get in trouble and it's very weird. I read it for the Effed Up Book Club, and we met tonight. The uh, the air quality index got down to the moderate range instead of the unhealthy range uh, where it's been uh, for several days. I guess it, in the evening it has been getting better. I'm not sure why that is. I don't know, maybe to, something to do with the temperature. But uh, we did have our book club meeting uh, out in the park. We were all socially distanced and had masks and everything. So um, it was a little smoky on that side of town. But, hmm, uh, but we seemed... Yeah, you can hear it in my voice again, I'm sure. But... but I seem to have survived. Uh, this book was very weird. Like I said, it's a collection of short stories. We all really liked the first short story uh, called The Summer People. And then the rest of them were like, I don't understand. Uh, I mean, some of them I, I would get glimmers of understanding or I'd start to get into a groove and then the story would end. So... I, I'm not sure if I'm just too stupid or I, mean, I did listen to it on audiobook so maybe if I were reading it reading a physical copy of the book so maybe someday I'll go through that um, but I did finish that up this afternoon overall I'd say I liked it I might like it better if I tried it again um, and had a little bit more more of an idea what I was getting into and and could like flip back and forth and um and also some of the stories seemed kind of related to each other so maybe there's some some connections going on there that might be interesting to look at so I got interrupted uh, last night and I don't think I got around to mentioning that Get In Trouble is the book that I am now planning to use for my uh, supernatural or paranormal book. So uh, it was short stories, but all of the short stories had some sort of supernatural or paranormal element, whether it was superheroes or ghosts. Um, there is even a haunted house, at least one haunted house story. Some of the stories I didn't really understand, um, and I kind of want to go back and read them text uh, because I think I might actually if I'm able to flip back several pages and compare things once I have new information in the story uh, I might might have a better understanding of what the heck is going on uh, and I really really like her writing style so I'm I would love to see a novel from this person. She's only written, or well, she's only published st short stories so far. So I would like to see what she does with a novel because so often when I would start getting into the groove of the story and then it'd be over. And I'm like, wait, 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 come back, come back here. I'm not done. <laughs> and then for the, the second book that I might be swapping out, yesterday I started on... Uh, Alyssa Cole's new thriller that's coming out September 1st. I got an arc of that. I'm also doing a video on how I really need to get my net galley score, my net galley ratio. Uh, it's it's bad. I really need to improve that ratio. So I'm like, well, let's just start with this one. It's in that way I can get this one reviewed before it comes out. And uh, and then I'll start going back to the ones that I've missed the release date on. Um, but that's, 
When No One Is Watching by Alyssa Cole. And so I started reading that yesterday and I am really liking it so far. I'm not terribly far in, but but I am really liking that. So I'm thinking creepy cover, maybe haunted house. I don't know, but I'm sure it will count for something. This is Tuesday morning and the air quality, I checked it about an hour ago and it was almost up to unhealthy. Had to go out and about for blood work. So, and I am sporting one of my new masks from Crescent City Couture. Um, isn't that lovely? Little bats. So, this is very on theme for Summerween, I think. But I was out and about, so I thought, hey, let's stop at the dancing marsupial. And, uh get some takeout. So I got the bison burgundy pie and a profiterole. I would have gotten a salad, but they're kind of limited on their offerings. They don't do salads right now. Bison burgundy, that's their special flavor of the month. <laughs> Look, it even has a bison head on the top. That's awesome. Yeah, Walting Kangaroo, by the way, is probably, probably the best restaurant in Fort Collins. So... If you're ever in Fort Collins, you have to get over there. And they're not a sponsor, but I just love them this much. Um, you can actually have frozen pies delivered to you. It's not cheap, but um, yeah, they will, they will ship. Hey, it's Thursday afternoon. Not a whole lot to report. Um, I'm well into, well, I'm almost done, I think. I think I'm about maybe 85% into When No One Is Watching by Alyssa Cole. And it's shaping up really, really well. Unless it just totally loses it uh, in this last bit, I think it's going to be one that I highly recommend. So yesterday I just mostly read on that and uh, did have to go run a few errands, had to return a library book and stopped at Old Firehouse and picked up my pre-order of Kevin Hearn's Ink and Sigil. It's a supernatural mystery, so maybe I'll even get to it this time. It's a spin-off from the Iron Druid Chronicles series. I'm behind on that, so I feel kind of bad jumping over to this, but but it just it sounds super intriguing, so I really want to read it. What I think I'm going to do is I've got some um, some potatoes that I need to use up. And I found this recipe for Greek lemon potatoes. And I just think that looks really yummy. So I think I'm going to try to make that. So I've got the potatoes uh, all ready to, well, almost ready to go in the oven. I need to add some broth to the pan. I'm using a smaller pan than the recipe called for because I'm using a smaller, I'm, I'm cutting it uh, in size. So I'm using an eight inch square baking dish. I will just add the broth and pop it in the oven at 400. And we'll see how this turns out. I smell the garlic. Ooh, love garlic. Um, I did finish When No One Is Watching by Alyssa Cole. It is excellent. Well, this is promising. Can you hear it sizzling? Mmm. Well, it's Friday night, and I just got this in the mail, and I bet I know what it is. It's not Summerween related, and today I really have not done much Summerween-wise. Uh, I'm gonna see if I can get back to my In the Dark book and finish that up tonight, but let's open this up. Yes, in. Indeed, that is the Reading Rush 2020 coin. It's very, very shiny. So the readathon itself turned out oddly, to say the least. But I am a coin collector, so I kind of had to get the coin. So I got my net galley review posted for when no one is watching. Will automatically post over on Goodreads. So if you follow my Goodreads link 
in the description below, then you'll be able to read my full review. Right now, I am waiting to see if I can get into the Bubonicon, the live Zoom presentation on mythology and gods in fiction. So the, only the first hundred people can get in, so we'll see if I'm early enough. Or if not, I can go watch it on YouTube. But that should be interesting. Uh, Bubonicon is, yes, it's named after a plague. It's in Albuquerque, and of course they had to go virtual this year. So it's, it's just one day of programming. Uh, so Bubonicon 52, which was supposed to happen this year, will happen in person, fingers crossed, next year in Albuquerque, but it's nice to have this virtual version to tune into. But while I am waiting, I am going to get started on my my selection for uh, recommended by one of the hosts, and that is Home Before Dark by Riley Sager. So that promises to be creepy. Good thing the sun is shining. Well, no, the sun is not shining. Oh, never mind. So this was my in the dark read for Summerween. Uh, it was not a scary book, but it was it was really weird. I really don't know what to make of Flüleborg. I wouldn't call this a book, but it's I don't know a podcast. I I don't know exactly what it was. It's like some of those Audible original things, but. But for Libro FM. Anyway, uh, I, I did read it entirely, if not in the dark, in the dim. Um, and at some points I like enclosed myself in an interior bathroom during the day so that I wouldn't have any light. But I did read it in the dark-ish. And this was going to be my read for, um, well it was going to count for both host recommendation and for haunted house book. Uh, I'm, I'm at 42% in this audiobook, and I, I don't honestly know yet whether it's an actual haunted house, but I would count it because the book within a book in this is definitely a haunted house story. So I would say it counts even if, even if Maggie discovers that Yes, it's all a hoax. But I will not finish it in time for Summerween, because that ends tonight, and I'm at 42%, and it's really super creepy, and I would like to sleep tonight. So, yeah, that's, that's a wrap for Summerween. I finished three of the prompts. Uh, read a book with a creepy cover when no one is watching. Uh, read a paranormal slash supernatural book, get in trouble, and then read a book in the dark-ish, um, Wanderlust USA. So there's my three, and I got a really good start on one book that would cover the other two, uh, and that would be Home Before Dark, and that would have covered read a book with a haunted house and read a book recommended by the hosts. So, so not too bad. This was just a really, really fun little challenge. Um, I mean, you know, just a week there of reading spooky and or weird books. Uh, and... That was that was a lot of fun to start to get in the mood for other fall challenges. I know Fright Fall starts Wednesday, I guess Tuesday, Wednesday, Tuesday. Tuesday's the first? Yeah. So yeah, Fright Fall starts on Tuesday and goes for two months. And then there's another, oh, Readers Imbibing Peril. That starts on Tuesday and goes for two months. And I'm sure there are tons of other spooky fall readathons. Uh, I don't know if I'll 
do any others because <laughs> I think I probably have enough going as it is. But yeah, so thanks to Gabby and thanks to Olivia. And comment below, did you do Summerween? How did it go for you? What books did you read? And are you going to do any other um, any other spooky readathons coming up? Please like and subscribe and see you around.